Hello again. This video explores PDA avoidance strategies. I'll talk through strategies I've used myself, including during childhood. PDA, if you're not familiar with the term, stands for Pathological Demand Avoidance. It's a neurological condition entailing deep-rooted avoidance of demands, as well as control need, high anxiety, interest in fantasy and role play, people focus and other traits which you can read about on PDA Society's website. Here's the link. Before we plunge in, I'd like to emphasise that my PDA avoidance drive operates at a pre-conscious level. It affects my emotions, causing me to feel strong negative feelings such as terror, contempt or disgust towards things I might do, thus prompting me to want to steer clear of them for my own well-being and safety. Actions I've taken to avoid demands have therefore been emotion-driven. They have on occasion been premeditated because some demands, like having to go to school, happen repeatedly and with advanced warning, giving my demand-avoidant brain time and practice to think of ways to avoid them ahead of time. So let's start with some of the strategies I use to avoid school. This is a big area because, well, I hated school a lot and spent 11 years of my young life being forced to go to it. The whole school experience entailed layers of demands upon demands. Wake up, put on my uniform, leave on time, enter the building, sit where allocated, do not leave my desk, be quiet learn what the teacher dictates, etc, etc. On top of all this, I hated school because of other issues, such as painfully failing to connect with the other children and a quirky body clock that causes mornings to be the middle of my sleep cycle. So yes, I wanted to avoid waking up for school because I needed to be asleep. I also wanted to avoid going to it anyway once forced out of bed and when there, in school, I wanted to avoid its individual components, like following lessons and sitting where told. I'd been excited to start school, but my first morning there changed my mind, and I never wanted to go back. I literally told my mum this. I don't want to go to school. I want to stay home. I hate school. This didn't work, though, so I tried begging her and pleading, but this didn't work either. Forced to physically attend it, I spent most of my time in school immersed in my private fantasy daydream sagas, so able to avoid consciously being there. I skipped around alone in the playground, imagining I was with more desirable things like baby deer, and stared out of a classroom window. This became my norm. I'm actually still like this with things that are bombarded at me to listen to, like adverts. My consciousness just slips away. I may study my nails or start thinking about a trip away I'd like to make. I avoid the demand of focusing on the advertiser's words by disengaging my mind. I make no conscious effort to do this, but I do feel initial anger at the advertiser for blasting their message at me when I don't want to listen to it and I never asked for it. Okay, so I discovered to my intense delight that my mum kept me home from school if I was ill. Oh, it was brilliant! I immediately took to pretending to be ill every school morning. The reality was that I felt ill anyway from chronic sleep deprivation, but my mum would not accept tiredness as an acceptable excuse to avoid school, so I had to be creative. I learnt to feign sore throats and stomach problems, feeling sick, because these had no visible signs for my mum to check. I also learnt to rub my forehead rapidly before she came into the room, so my forehead felt warm when she put a hand to it to see if I had a temperature. Older still, I learnt to forge sick notes and wander the streets when my mum thought I'd gone to school. This wasn't actually a very safe thing to do, wandering the streets as a child on my own, but, hey, 
It's better than being in school. So, other avoidance strategies I've used. Okay, distraction is one. If someone is talking to me about something I want to avoid, especially if I sense they're about to prang me of a demand, I've at times distracted them by bringing up an interesting and unexpected topic. For example, my tooth came out. Saying I'm ill. This is a habit which has stayed with me after I finished school. And my automatic reaction to demands, even in my own head, can be to pitifully claim illness. For example, if I think to myself that I should hoover the living room, a forlorn little inner voice sometimes pipes up saying, I'm really ill, I can't do this, I'm so ill. I actually feel partly elated if I am genuinely ill because it frees me from obligation to meet demands. If I actually do persuade myself to overcome demand avoidance and get stuck into a task, like hoovering the living room, my PDA brain still tries to make me avoid. It will say things in my head like, this is taking too much time and energy. It's miserable doing this, it's an ordeal. Every second is hell. Don't bother doing that bit. That'll do. Just leave it there. My inner perfectionist tends to be very, very depressed because of the quality of the work I produce being so rubbish. So, yes, I admit, disappointingly, work I produce always tends to disappoint me because of the cut corners I've made. It's sloppy. It's just, oh, a big hash a mess i could have tried harder but i didn't and to be honest i couldn't because of demand avoidance i have this issue of producing artwork i can have a vision in my head of what i want to produce oh, i'll be amazing but my pda brain objects to every single action required to produce it my enthusiasm may overcome avoidance enough to start a project but finishing it is a whole different ball game with me miserably half paralysed by demand avoidance at every stroke. This is actually why my Sally Cat meme style is scratchy. I deliberately set it up to be as undemandy for me to reproduce as possible. Another avoidance strategy I have is to not put things away that I might want to use later. For example, if I'm putting away washed dishes, I might leave out a saucepan I'll need for cooking dinner later. This is a double bonus avoidance strategy because one, it allows me to skip meeting the full demand of putting all the washed cookware away and two, I'm sparing myself a future demand of taking it out of the cupboard again for when I need it later. The irony is though that leaving it out often causes me extra effort because it's in the way. So there you go. Thank you for listening to this. This is just a few of my avoidance strategies that I've become conscious of and have shared with you. And I hope that they've given you a bit of insight into the, ooh, what do you call it, the irrationality and determined avoidance of a PDA brain. Thanks very much.